Okay, so we talk about datums, we talk about datum reference frame, but how do you actually specify the datum? Okay, how you do it is with this thing right here. This is our datum feature symbol. What does it look like? Well, it's got a triangle on the bottom, which is either gonna be attached to a leader line or an extension line. And then above that, there's gonna be a little straight line. We have rectangular or square box that will have either one or more letters in it. And it'll look like that. It can be upside down. That's fine too. It can be sideways, but your letter never changes orientation. Okay. And a model, it can change orientation, but what we're going to be using is orthographic views. It never ever changes orientation in that case. So I see this one sideways. I'm not forgetting that. It's just, that's only based on the orientation for a 3D model. We don't use that here. We're going to be doing only orthographic views. And so that one, it's always going to say the same orientation. You can see there's a lot of ways to connect it. I can connect it to some sort of feature control frame. I connect it to this plane right here. Whatever service I'm touching though, that's the one that's going to get, be the frame, um, the datum feature. In this case, well, that one right there is still talking about this surface. It's the one that's extending from. And this surface would become my datum H. You might also realize, if you look at right here, there are one, two, three, four different datums, but in all these feature control frames, I only see one or two. You're not, you're not going to have a lot of times more datums than are required for any one feature control frame because different feature control frames might have different datum references. Next thing, they're only applied to physical features. Like right here, you see that's connected to this diameter, this axis, this hole. In the end, this axis is what is going to become your datum reference frame or datum reference. Um, but we don't connect a datum feature symbol to an axis ever. So if I say make this cylinder a datum, you would not say, okay, well, here's my center line. I'm going to attach it to the center line. You don't do that. That is wrong. It's always attached to something you can touch. And we're gonna learn about datum targets a little bit later, and we wouldn't need these datum feature symbols if we were doing datum targets. Okay, so for a flat surface, if we have something that looks kind of like this. I have applied it to the bottom surface, the back surface, and the side surface. Well, those establish my datum planes. They're gonna establish three perpendicular planes, though, these three planes I have used as my datums do not have to in themselves be perfectly perpendicular. You can have a shape that looks you know, like this and say, well, that's datum. Oh man, that's gonna be really weird. I'll probably use a leader line then. That's gonna be datum um, you know, B right here. And this one would be datum A. You can do that, that's fine. Because this one is at least partially angled from datum A. Now, the high points on my imperfect surface are going to establish the simulated datum location, okay? Remember, that's gonna be those high points that's talking about that true geometric counterpart. If I had some perfect plane and I set my workpiece on it, that's what this workpiece would actually be touching at, those highest points. I'm um, gonna be simulated with a whole lot of different things, but you know, with the, this class at least, it would be only a tooling surface if we do it, um, but there's also lots of digital methods. And here you can see this tool that is simulating the datums. So I have one wall right here in the back, that's for B. I have one wall on the side for C. And I have this flat plate on the bottom for A. Okay, that flat plate on the bottom is usually your primary datum because that's going to constrain the most degrees of freedom. And usually you pick your biggest flattest surface as that primary datum. Not always, but usually. Okay, now like I said earlier, with a cylindrical feature, you never attach it to its axis. Never, ever, ever attach it to its axis. Okay, you do not do that. No, you attach it either to an extension line from the surface or directly to the surface. Um, and then there's this term right here, the actual mating envelope, which is simply saying, just like I had that true geometric counterpart for my ziggity-zaggity surface, 
Similarly, my cylinder is not going to be perfect. It's going to be kind of crazy too. I'll be angled. And when I'm trying to figure out an axis for my datum, I don't pick the ziggity zaggity axis right here. I say, okay, well, if I was trying to fit a cylinder around this perfectly perpendicular possibly cylinder, well, I would use the axis of this perfect cylinder that this fits around. That's what I'm going to be using here. And we're going to jump into that more a little bit later. So don't worry about that if this doesn't quite make sense yet. We're going to have some great examples of it in a little while. So thank you for listening. That should be it for this time. Yes, and I will see all of you next time. Have a wonderful day.